Krista, many people think that there's no such thing as a spiritual world. You've had experiences that show you otherwise. What first made you believe that the spiritual world was real? Um, pretty much when I was in year 10, I had a very strong spiritual experience and I, I didn't know very much about the spiritual world at all. I just became very ill. Um, I was sleeping a lot and I didn't have any reason to be. I was happy. I was um, enjoying school and all that sort of thing. But I was sleeping at least 16 hours a day. After my third lesson at school, I would fall asleep at my desk. Just couldn't help it. Um, there was no reason. It's again, like, um, we went to doctors and they pretty much said they had no idea. There was no reason that they could find for it. We had some blood tests and they were considering sending me to specialists and stuff, but they still had no idea. They didn't even know what specialist to send me to. I think it was three months of sleeping, at least 16 hours a day, and I would woke up at three o'clock, which was unusual enough that I was waking up at a time I didn't have to. I had four alarm clocks to wake me up each morning, each progressively further away from my bed. I never woke up till the third one. Um, <clears throat> I woke up and I saw my sister in the room. And I was just, you know, I thought, oh, what's she doing in the room? Is she trying to steal my earrings? I don't know. <laughs> so um, I went to set up and say, Shisha, what are you doing in my room? Three o'clock in the morning. Anyway, so I went to say that, and as soon as I started saying her name, vanished. And it was just again that certainty that I knew that it wasn't actually gone. I couldn't see it, but it was there. And it was inside of me and I couldn't talk at all. I was um, just sitting in bed trying to talk um, and I was lucky actually that I had recently seen um, or read something along the lines of how if they attack you you just have to use Jesus' name because Jesus is power sort of thing and that was the only thing I could think about. I was thinking okay okay use that just say Jesus and I couldn't say anything, of course. I'm just trying to say it over and over again. I couldn't say it. And I'm repeating it over in my head, saying, Jesus, 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 you know. And um, then eventually I could start saying it. Just, and then it was um, Jesus and Jesus. And as I said, it, it could, would move, the feeling would move out of me, that paralyzation kind of thing moved out of me and gradually it was pushed out like so I could move and I could speak and after that I wasn't going to go back to sleep but um, what got me after that was I wasn't tired and that was instant? That it came? was an instant thing right from the second that I um, was praying to Jesus it was gone I went to school that day and I was able to focus on things I was able to talk to people without kind of uh, yeah <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying there. So you were a Christian at this stage before all this happened? Yeah, I've been a Christian all my life. So I had some idea what was happening. Mm. But I always worry about people who aren't. Because I know I've met quite a few people now because I'm fairly open with my experiences. Um, that have seen spiritual things, who know the spiritual exist, but they don't have any idea what to do about it, what it means, and, you know, it can end up rather badly for them. And they're so scared a lot of the time. They don't know what's going on. Um, <clears throat> they just know they're spiritual and they can't talk to anybody even. But more and more people now are starting to, they're starting to believe in ghosts, etc., without necessarily believing in God or the Bible. What is it about your experiences that makes you believe that the Bible has a true explanation of the spiritual world? Well, first, uh, at least with this last experience here, you s I said Jesus and it, and it said, like, was everything that shamed it. Because after, a little bit after this as well, I saw that spirit come back. I, it came outside my room, it would walk past the window and things like this, and it would try and scare me. And, yeah, it worked a little bit, but... I gradually got more confident with it because <clears throat> I would just, I thought, well, Jesus worked last time, right? <laughs> so I would pray and I would, and gradually.
gradually, you know, I learned that it wasn't just prayer that helped it. You confront the spirit, say, in Jesus' name, I order you leave. And you be certain. And you know God. And he helps you. He He comes then. And they always, they always leave. They're scared of him. And if it wasn't that, then why would his name make such a difference? to what happens like you could say and I have experimented with this because you know it's interesting mm -hmm. you go uh, so you know as I'll just add in here that I have seen quite a bit ever since this experience um so I'll be like I see you over there I'm gonna try this out all right so in my name I order you to leave does nothing you know and you try, and I said with more conviction, of course, because you know, but it's not um, my name or anybody else's name I can pull out of a hat, or other religious leaders that you like try and pull out of a hat and say, in their name you leave, or something like that. It doesn't work. You have to use God, Jesus. Um, what was the next major experience that you had? Basically, we had some people come to our church. The Southern Lights group, when they were talking about this, I, I went to every meeting they held and they would pray over people quite often. They would um, have everyone come up and pray for each other, try and get words of knowledge from God and things like this. And one of them was that we all came up we, and they would just pray over us generally and see what God said to them for us. Yes. And so I went up to this guy and I, he came and he prayed for me. and. He was just praying that God would open my spiritual eyes and he was the one who had been talking a lot about spirits and seeing in the spiritual things like this. Well, what was the actual prayer he prayed? He prayed that God would lift the scales from my eyes and that I would see in the spirit, I would see in the spiritual and I operate in the spiritual. So I just kind of thought, oh yes, alright, that's very nice, dear sort of thing. And um, after he'd finished praying for me, my eyes got really hot and itchy sort of thing. And I was con rubbing them all the time, just, yeah, it's okay, okay, I get it. That's probably not just, you know, him then. You know, if it has, I took that from God, I said, all right, I get it, this is from you. And so after that, I was on the lookout. I was looking for, you know, I thought, well, maybe that's it. Maybe the scales are lifted and I get to see in spiritual now and sort of thing. And so for the next, I think it was another three months that I was looking out for it and nothing happened. Okay, so we heard they were in Adelaide and we thought, you know, that's not too far away. We'll go to Adelaide and we'll see them again. And we went and we got prayed for again. And when I went up and got prayed for again, this is another person from the Southern Lights Church. No idea who I am. They didn't even know I'd been to other services. They didn't know a friend of theirs had actually prayed over me before. And he prayed again about spiritual sight for me. He um, said that I had seen spirits before, but that wasn't going to be the end of it. I was going to see more spirits. I was going to dream dreams. I was going to basically have um, quite a lot of knowledge of the spiritual was the general gist of it and that I was going to have power in the spiritual. So, I was like, alright, that's great, and I believe it because, you know, you don't know me, and it's the second time this has happened, but three months ago, I had, I was all excited about it was going to happen, and I thought, well, I just have to wait. I remember another part of it, actually, just suddenly, randomly, um, was that I was going to be a well, and... People, and I interpret this this way, is that um, all the world would spill out of me and it runs along, along the ground and it touches the feet of people around me. So to me, now, knowing uh, what I know, this is quite a few years ago now, so I see that as um, people who knew me and people I told to talk to about this have often had spiritual experiences of their own after I've spoken to them. They have seen things or felt things in the spiritual and possibly so they know what I say is in truth.
-hmm. But I take that as when I share and I show people what I've learned in the spiritual, they it flows from me. Yep. They receive it as well. So what was the first thing you saw after that second prophecy? How did your spiritual sight begin? Very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it started, and I was surprised because it's not all the scene, which I was thinking, you just see them there, and you know, it's cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see it right here, and I see everything. It's not like that, and you don't want it to be. Um, I can see things in my peripheral vision, and they move past, and I get a glimpse of what is in the spiritual, but when you get, and there's more than you can imagine, like, it's, can be packed with spirits in a mostly empty room, but you'll know there's something that happens here, because, like, clearly somebody calls these spirits here, there's some reason they come here, like, um, a place where people do drugs and drink often, packed with spirits, because spirits know this is where they come to influence people and things like this it just happened more and more that it was these things in my peripheral vision that there was a person or a shape or something like that and as soon as i turned to look at it properly it's gone but again still like sometimes as well sometimes it's just a hint it's you know not there if i look again and i can't see it anymore sometimes it'll stay there and I can only see it as it goes through my peripheral vision. Yeah. I have seen spirits more directly than that. I've seen them, like, right there as a person would be. Yeah. Um, that's much more rare. And it's... I consider it to be God saying it's important when he lets me really focus on something like that. Um, I've seen it where I sometimes feel like I'm in a movie because... It's like the effects that you put on them in a movie when they morph or something like that. Because I've seen it, I've been talking to a person, looked at them, and their face morphs. And it'll show me something about them. Like, for instance, a young girl who was actually in our group um, that we prayed and stuff was um, just sitting on her couch. And I looked over at her, and I could see a dog's head on her. And I was just, okay, well... Let's talk to her then, because, you know, if I can't share with, you know, other Christians we're here with, you know, that's the point. So, we sat her down and we said, well, Gracie, you know that I've got this gift from God that I see things occasionally. And just then, I saw a dog's head on you. And she said, and we are saying, we're not making any assumptions about what this means. We don't want to insult you or anything like that. This is just what I saw. You know yourself better than anyone. What do you think it means? And Grace said, it's a spirit of bitchiness. I can be a real bitch. And we were a little bit taken back because she's very sweet to us. And that, But she knew herself that that's what it was. She wasn't insulted. And I take that as part of the reason I know this is from God. Some things could have come across so insulting, and you don't want to say it, but nobody's been upset or angry, or and it's never been untrue, the things that I've seen. People know when I say, I've seen this of you, they'll say, that's true, I know that of myself. Can you tell me what some of these spirits looked like to you? <clears throat> a common one is a spirit of vanity which is a woman who's a little bit shorter than average, it's about, it's about that tall. She has long black hair down to her hips sort of area. She's deathly pale white with bright red lips and just anorexically skinny. She generally wears white, um, either, you know, something silken or fancy or even just a plain white dress, but um, she comes along very often, a lot of people are quite vain, um, and that's actually one that a lot of spiritual seers see, because it is one of the most common ones I've met, I think, two or three people who've all seen her and described her the same way. So what you're saying is that 
what you've seen is not just a subjective thing, but that other people have seen the same spirits you've seen looking exactly the same way. Yeah, we've, um, particularly one person in particular, um, actually saw, has seen a lot of the spirits the same way as I do. And I've then met a few other people who've seen a few others the way that I do. Um, but because I draw um, a fair bit of what I see, other people can pick it up as well. Like, normally it would just be descri description. Oh, and their hair is this long, and oh my goodness, they have bright red Oh, my, the pale face! And, you know, you're both bouncing off each other really fast because nobody else understands, let alone sees what you see or sees it at the same time as well and you're both just, yeah, you saw that? Yeah! Mm. And so, you know, I mean, you get excited when we meet each other because it's so rare to talk to somebody who understands or essentially, especially for them because I've gotten to the point where I um, just know that most people have had something spiritual happen to them they don't know that it's a spiritual experience they think it's creepy a lot of the time, but they don't know what it is. Um, but I drew an angel once, an angel who would... Uh, I think she's an angel of purity. She goes through um, my home church. She's got the very simplest dress, very young. So I drew her because I thought she was cute. Um, a friend who visited our church anyway, and she came over and I was showing her some of my drawings and she was just struck, like she knew this angel. She'd seen it before as a child, she tried to draw it a hundred times as a child and even the way it was posed was exactly as she remembered it. And these sort of things make me, like, it's also a certainty that I'm not crazy, yeah. you know? Because it's been brought up by, like, the first time with the sleeping demon where I just, I was a little bit uncertain except that, you know, it, I was no longer sick, but that's still something mental you can do yourself. Yeah. Um, but meeting person after person who's had these sort of experiences, who can now tell me that not only did they have these experiences, but they've seen the same spirits. and. When we're in the same room, we normally will be able to see the same spirits. Well, Krista, can you just give me a rundown of more of the other spirits you've seen? Like, Greed is a very well-groomed businessman, sunnies, pinstripe suit, slicked back hair, very efficient looking. Um, as you might guess, generally Lust is a very curvy woman. She tends to change her appearance depending on the person she's connected to and um, their preferences, which can tell you a little bit more than you need to know. Anyway, um, and just stuff like that. Um, they all, other than the general basic ones that you'll see a lot, they all tend to be much as you would expect from when you see them, so their appearance tells you what they are. But like, a really unkept looking spirit attached to someone could be a spirit of sloth because, or laziness or spirits that crawl along the ground are sorrow they're generally in rags and desperate looking When you mention the spirits being attached to somebody what do you mean? What are these spirits doing? They, I say attached, means they have an influence on someone somebody, it's like if you get a cut, and it's that kind of wound in yourself, but after all, if you know you don't look after it properly, it get, can get infected and it gets nasty, and it can get worse and worse and take over more of you. So it's a lot like an infection. So you have an issue uh, that starts in you, and then a spirit sees it, and it goes for that issue and it tries to make it worse and it'll just poke that part of you and make it harder to heal and get over it. If you've ever had that experience where you feel like you've got two parts of you arguing against yourself, and I've had that experience, it's just the weirdest thing ever, um, because it's in your head and it will use your voice and 
it'll appeal to you otherwise why would it even be there like it knows where to attack you basically it knows your weaknesses it knows your weaknesses I'll use an example of my own for you so you know what I mean but the time when I was waiting for my spiritual sight to come and I was being very patient and I was going out with my friends who were praying and they were getting all this stuff from God and he was talking to them and a friend of mine even had like God give her jewels she was praying and she got diamonds in her hand and I was you know this is big stuff people mm. and I'm saying I get nothing and people can't understand that I'm getting nothing and I'm just like well it's his choice and you know it's all good and there's sitting in the car as we went one day and um, this is actually a spirit that spoke so why do I even come to these if God doesn't speak to me clearly he doesn't want to speak to me otherwise he would have done it by now why do I even bother coming then, uh, then I personally answered well I like to come here and I like to be close to God whether he speaks to me or not it's not a choice of you know he has to talk to me or I'm not coming and that's such a big problem for him <laughs> sort of thing and this just and it just kept coming you know no nah, he doesn't want you here don't go don't continue going to these it's a horrible idea so you know you don't get anything you're not contributing maybe people don't even want you here um this kind of thinking and I was just sitting there thinking I don't think that's me I don't no, no, because I know that I enjoy this. I like hanging around with my friends. Like, I don't need to be spoken to by God to hang around with my friends. What is this that keeps saying that? And as I thought that, gone. Mm -hmm. Like, straight out. Uh, you've talked quite a bit about demons, but you haven't said a lot about angels. Do you see angels? Yeah, I've seen quite a few angels. I don't mention them that much because... God likes to be known that it is Him, that He has the power, He has the strength, and that it is all Him who does this. He likes us to not to, you know, get all wrapped up in the angels and like think about because we have a tendency, I think, people to worship angels even a little bit in our society. You know, you always see the little angel statuettes and stuff, and He doesn't want us to be wrapped up in angels. He wants us to be wrapped up in him. What is the purpose of angels? Uh, they do his bidding, but it is his bidding. But you say um, to see a demon there and you'll be all like, all right, I know my stuff, I'm gonna get rid of you. And so you go up to this demon and you'll be all like, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I order you leave, go now. And you'll also add a few things like, never return, never come back to this place, because they always do. They always find little loopholes and whatever you say, so it's kind of like being a teeny bit of a lawyer, because you have to set boundaries for them so they can't come back. But as you will say this thing, um, you see an angel come, and it'll, like, you know, yeah, you're going now, sort of hustle them off. And also, angels influence the feel of a place. There are angels that go and they hustle the demons and they get them going. But you've also got angels who, at least the way I see them, I've quite often seen huge angels who stand over properties. And they are this kind of, they influence that property. It's kind of owned by them in a weird way. Like cemeteries often have quite strong demons of death that, creep you out when you go there, you feel like all eyes are, these eyes are on you. That's quite a common thing for people. Um, they don't know it's a spiritual thing. Um, you've also got, um, kind of like the spirits that you invite to a place. So, my parents' home, they had, um, a spirit that would walk around in our, through all our rooms and stuff, was, um, what I believe to be a spirit of like calming and peace and gentility was um, a woman who looked to be, you know, about 35, 40, uh, an older mother kind of sort of look to her. She was wearing, um, you know, a white gown.
they always wear white, angels always wear white. Um, and she was just a very peaceful, moved very slowly, kind of very poised woman who would just glide through a house. She was, and I believe her to be a spirit of peace just because of how I feel when they go past and things like this, you can feel the influence of it. You've mentioned sensing angels. Are there different ways of you being aware of the presence of spirits? Uh, there's spiritual sight, seeing in the peripheral. I always just, if I say spiritual sight, that's generally what I mean. Um, however, there were times when, of course, I'd see them front on. Then there were times when I could, I had an image in my head of figures standing next to a tree. I just got this picture in my head. And when I turned around, the very next thing I saw was that tree, but there was no one near it. And I just knew that that was God showing me in another way that there was a spirit there. There's always the feeling, just a general um, influence from the spirits that you feel. And this is the most common way people will actually interact with the spiritual and not know about it is this feeling of something from outside influencing them. These here are little stones that we've written on, things that God has done for us and stuff like this. I pick this up and I can feel God's influence in it. It's connected to him and I can feel it in here, that just a slight feeling of power. Okay, so you believe this is a gift intended for ministering to people? It's intended to help people know where the problem is lying in themselves when they've got issues generally, like for sorrow, when you can't get over something, when something just hurts always, it always hurts and just years and years have gone by and the sorrow is always here. That, like, uh, that can be a spirit and if they know it's a spirit, they can go and say, spirit, leave me, and they can fight it, and they can get rid of it, and then the healing process can start properly. And that's the main reason I believe God shows me these things. Well, thank you very much, Krista. I, I think everybody will have learned a lot.